Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. This Saturday is March for the Babies, which, as I mentioned, is a a virtual uh, protest because obviously Bernie Finn, as the the president, as a lawmaker, is not going to be a lawbreaker, even though uh, it's going to be a beautiful day on on Saturday. It always is uh, every every March for the Babies. I've uh, I've covered the the last two uh, for the the Unshackled. That's where I last uh, last bumped into you. I've bumped into you a se- uh, several times. Uh, at first, I think it's a Lauren Southern, uh, Stefan Molyneux event in, in 2018. That was when Antifa were at the front. Also at the Jordan Peterson, his first yeah. event. Although uh, we, we're not allowed to bump into each other at the moment. I think even if lockdown is is lifted, you're not allowed to bump into anyone because of yeah, social distancing. Like... <laughs> uh, I always got uh, at, the, at the March sunburn because it was always just a, a beautiful spring day I, and last year i did bring my sunscreen but i was in such a, a a rush getting my equipment set up i've got to put it on and if people are meticulously going through my videos from last time you can probably see the sunburn coming on oh, but <laughs> mm, but yeah it was it, it's a, it's always a beautiful spring day but yeah you're only allowed out uh, two hours a day at the moment uh uh, only in groups of five from no more than two households. So obviously that uh, rules out uh, the March for the Babies, but uh, it's going to be an online event. You're speaking. So is uh, Amanda Stoker, uh, LMP Queensland Senator, where uh, they've got their state election at the end of the month uh, with their, or oh, Dan on heels, Anastasia Palaszczuk, who pushed through a similar abortion law uh, yeah. recently. I know Amanda Stoker is a, a firm uh, pro-lifer and yeah. uh, excellent speaker, so I'm sure she'll have plenty to say. And also Martin Isles, uh, he was actually the founder of the Human Rights Law Alliance, now uh, now the director of the Australian Christian Lobby. And uh, I've particularly enjoyed his, his commentary this year on just the, the state of our society because it even somebody like me as a, an atheist, it's, it, it's, it, it's so, uh, so ex- it, it, it can reach the secular person because it is such astute uh, political commentary. I think his, his uh, posts on Facebook have been absolutely uh, excellent and spot on this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, um, you know, it, sometimes you may have a, a bit more of a religious um, spin, but ultimately the whole goal is, Truth, you know, and truth, truth in the public square, I think, is his, his thing. Um, yeah, and, and and certainly being such a strong voice in, in the culture wars and, and just um, helping people understand what we're actually dealing with. It's whether or not you're religious, it's those um, Judeo-Christian values that have, have held really well. So um, I'm super excited. I mean, what an honour for someone like me to be speaking alongside. I have I have actually spoken alongside both of them a couple of times now, and even in New Zealand with Mark Niles and Miranda Devine. Um, so, but it's still very surreal for someone like me who's normally worrying about what's what's for dinner for the kids. Um, and I'm not in Parliament, but um, what an honour to to um to even be a part of this incredible organisation. Um, I um. Uh, you know, uh, got involved um, just before the last March for the Babies on the committee. I thought, you know, I was becoming very, very um, uh, despondent about, um, you know, the party and what was going on. I took a step back and I thought I'm going to focus on some of the positive things I can. So I joined the committee um, and the online protest is going to be, look, obviously we'd, we'd love to march in the thousands. And um, like you, I, I just I just loved it. Last year it was a beautiful day, and I took my my um, then four year old and my twelve year old, and she got very emotional during the talk. She's just horrified to even think that uh, in Victoria we have abortion, um, you know, full term abortion. Um, I personally have had two miscarriages myself, and um, uh, they were great losses for our family and. Uh, those little little people and those, um, you know, the, with the, the loss that I have with the miscarriage, they, they're part of our family and they were definitely babies um, who were lost to us. And it's 
it's interesting you've got celebrities as a recent high profile celebrity who, who lost her baby very sadly um she had a miscarriage and um yeah that uh that kind of exposes the fact that uh, this comes down to those that are wanted and those who are not wanted um because um it was Chrissy Teigen I, I believe who just lost her, her baby um and they talk about it as a, a baby so anyway March for the Babies this Saturday is at 1 p.m. And although we'd love to march in the thousands, it's going to be online. And we've um, the the committee and the team behind have um, used this as an, an opportunity to spread the message online. As you and I both know, sometimes um, opportunities come um, and you, when you least expect it, you can actually put a message out and it can be shared with the world in a much bigger audience. So that's our hope. Um, so everything will be online and we hope that you go to March for the Babies. Um, we are on Facebook. There's also .com on our website. Um, and click on the link that you'll be joining along with us if you can. Um, we've got some um, beautiful music, um, choirs. I think there'll be a um, testimonial. Um, and, yeah, we just it's going to be very professionally done. Part of, part of our goal as a, a pro-life movement is actually... Um, to take back the narrative and so there's some um, cartoon videos that are being made and this is something they've done we're watching culture shift in america i've uh, i've actually got the video ready to play the 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 promotional video so i'll play i'll play it for the audience now yep right Psst. hey are you there yeah today's the day oh I'm a little scared. I'm terrified. I'll probably cry. Really? I'm not going to. My mum's getting induced. Oh, my mum's getting an abortion. Oh, I I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. Is there anything you can do? I found kicking gets their attention. Oh, it's probably too late for me. Oh, but I heard some big people talking about how the laws might change, so this can't keep happening to us. I heard them say that too. They aren't allowed to do this to us in some parts of America now. But we're in Victoria. Things can change here too. And obviously the Baby Lives Matter a slogan is a play on the, well, the, the, the BLM acronym. Well, you know, that's, that's their own thing that they do. But at the end of the day, I believe that, um, you know, uh, in, like I said, in, in equality, true equality, and in, in um, fighting for actual rights and, and human rights, and there's nothing um, to me that's, that's more worth fighting for than the most vulnerable um, in our society. And that's what it means to protect all human life. Uh, yeah. That's why I've, I can't believe that uh, Daniel Andrews gets up every day and says, this is about human life. And I went through his resume at the beginning of the show, health minister who passed this uh, abortion law and oversaw euthanasia as well. He's, he's He passed a law to make it easier for the elderly to end their life but now he's keeping us all locked down because now he's only wants to keep the elderly alive longer there's so many contradictions absolutely yeah and and you know this is this is what needs to get out this information so yeah he passed the most extreme abortion laws in the world um and and so my my experience in getting involved in the pro life movement was that I I was always pro life myself in that you know I would have never been able to do that I'm someone who struggles to to you know I if I squash a snail <laughs> you know and so for me um, the thought of actually um, you know killing my bait my own baby um, I couldn't do it but I've never been vocal really on the issue and I'd had friends and families uh, members who'd all experienced it and. So I was just kind of quiet about it, thinking that it was, you know, only ever done in cases, that, you know, extremes. This is the argument. And and I think I've been desensitised. You know, they use this language, um, you know, um, a fetus, a baby becomes a fetus. Mm. 
Um, it's all part of desensitising and dehumanising and they've been very successful in that. It's a clump of cells. Um, you know, when the reality is when I've, I found out the legislation, um, which was through a, a wonderful video that Pro-Life Victoria had, had put out, and I ended up posting it on my page and it did really well from my page. I had friends who call themselves pro-choice um, who actually changed their view because it's so horrific to think that in Victoria it's perfectly legal to kill a baby right up to a full term, no reason whatsoever. Yeah, I put up um, the, the info sheet here, the, the 12 yeah. facts about Victoria's abortion law, which mentions abortion up to birth on demand after 24 weeks and doctors can't consci conscientiously object. They have to refer uh patients who want an abortion on uh late term abortions no pain relief partial birth abortion sex selective abortion can take place yep yes yes and also uh this is important illegal to offer help because well that's another one of fiona Patton's legacy the 150 meter exclusion zones around abortion clinics which means that you can't even offer women information who they uh, mo most of these women they don't want to be at the cl uh, the clinic but they've just been told that uh, abortion is your best and only option and then of course uh, victoria's uh, adoption a a rate is well 10 to 15 children per year it's just non-existent and there's so many people who, who want to adopt and this is why i found sort of the the debate around same-sex adoption when it was um legislated in daniel andrews's first term it's like why are we passing this law hardly any children are adopted in victoria absolutely i've got a friend myself who the year she adopted her baby um, there were three adoptions that year and 30,000 abortions. Um, yeah, so, um, it, you know, most, they're not going to advertise this and, and, and people actually, my whole goal is to actually get people to look at things themselves because um, we've got to actually get to a point where we start to look at legislation, look at policy. So look at it yourselves, it's horrific. Um, the fact that if a baby um, survives a botched abortion, which is unfortunately uh, more common than people think um, that they are denied medical care, um, that at 37 weeks, is it, yeah, that's the latest on record in Victoria, 37 weeks for a healthy baby and a healthy mum, and how the abortion is actually performed is horrific. Because that's, uh, they make sure to keep that uh, secret, and I know Facebook does its part in censoring that. You and I have both seen the, the Unplanned movie, which shows or oh, a, a, a dramatization of an abortion procedure and i was just um shell-shocked when i saw it even though i knew the truth just seeing it in that cinema form no wonder they didn't want people to see that movie of course and and in the interest of truth you, you if you're going to if you're going to say that this is okay then you need to be okay with the facts and what you're actually saying you're okay with um, no pain relief given to these babies. Now, all four of my babies, I had some um, some issues. I was told when I was 18 I couldn't even have children, so I desperately wanted children. Um, and then I lost my first one. And like I said, it was a real loss. That was a real baby. Um, I was in the first trimester. Um, but all four of my children have been born at 37 weeks, um, and they were babies, and they could feel um you know you you can you know that intuitively instinctively as a mother you can feel them moving around and um you know to to think that they are not even allowed um pain relief um and of course they voted against that amendment because the whole movement is about dehumanizing um human beings dehumanizing life um and it's one thing to say that a uh a, you know, in the first trimester when they do look quite alien-like and, you know, it's you can dissociate from that. But that the, the whole movement has exposed themselves um, by the fact that uh, at, at 37 weeks, at 40 weeks, um, we know that that baby is not a clump of cells. And so they're okay with that. And, there are, and it doesn't happen just in rare cases. It, it happens as a lifestyle choice. That was the the one on record for a 37-week-old baby, it was um, psychosomatic. The mother changed um, 
her mind. And I've, I've spoken firsthand with obstetricians who've told me this, who are against these laws, um, but also can't conscientiously object. That was voted against using a conscientious objection in Parliament. The irony of that and, and the fact that if a baby is born alive, um, surviving and suffering, you know, with its its limbs mm. and legs, and it's very graphic, but this is this is what you have to confront. This is the reality. If this is actually happening, um, you know, we, we've got to stand up and say no. And, you know, these babies actually aren't even uh, allowed um, pain relief or, um, you know, they're, they're left to die, you know, at a time in our society when the narrative is all about saving lives and you get these people standing on their high moral ground like D Daniel Andrews. I'm sorry, buddy, you don't get the high moral ground because you said that, that killing babies up till, you know, the age that my babies and beyond were born you said it's okay for any reason and um yeah and and it needs to be exposed um and then people can you know can um can actually make those decisions for themselves and i'm very, my passion comes from um you know i think i think just like the the pro-abort movement they've just been very very they do things very slowly steadily you know bit by bit by bit and i think that's what our movement needs to do we need to go you know, I'm not okay. I'm not okay with full term. I'm not okay with it, these amendments not being passed and actually start to wind it back and have those difficult conversations. In the they also spread uh, fake news about the, the pro-life movement that, oh, you don't care about the child after it's born. No, that's that, that's a complete falsehood. I remember at one of the, it was the, the pre-March for the Babies uh, dinner heard from, uh, one of the, the members of, I'll probably get the name wrong, uh, Helpers of God's Precious Infants. And Infant. he went through the, uh, how they support the woman after they've, they've given birth to an unpaid pregnancy. And he spoke about he, uh, they were invited to the first birthday party of one of the, uh, the mothers and, and babies that they'd, they'd saved. And uh, this, I've never seen video evidence of uh, pro-life people outside abortion clinics yelling out murderer. I've never seen that. No, that's right. And that's, you know, the dishonesty around it as well. The pro-life um, movement and the pro-life networks that I'm involved with, um, and I'm also involved um, with another organisation, the Australian Family Association, they're always very, very active in, in um, caring for mothers and babies. In fact, I was involved in a meeting recently where they were trying to uh, find a home, and I think they were successful in that, for a pregnant mother who um, who was uh, um, an immigrant who was studying over here, who had a child back home but just had no way to actually care for this baby. They felt overwhelmed and they ended up finding accommodation and people donated, and mm. that's a massive part of the pro-life movement. And also the caring for mothers, you know, um, this is the, the other reality is that um, every every woman and friend that I know that's actually gone through an abortion, um, uh, it may take a long time, but um, eventually it's a trauma. It's traumatic to, to kill your own child. Um, there's no uh, mental health um, offered, you know, op um, sorry, support offered. Um, they're not even counselled that there's another option. So there's a real, co I feel like there's a coercion that happens and then it ends up you know they often end up with post-traumatic stress disorder and uh you can't you can't as a mother um do that you may be able to block it out for a while but there's a loss and there's a grief there just like you know someone like me who has a miscarriage um add to that you know that this has been at, at your hands and we we love women um we want women and we love babies we love children and we yeah. we celebrate life and that's the whole point life is precious life is worth fighting for and mothers deserve to be honored and revered and and uh looked looked after and fathers you know there's a great there's a great loss for fathers too you know the big big movements of fathers who's who have wanted to keep their babies and their mothers have made these decisions and you know they experience such incredible loss i get so emotional about this topic because um to me, there's almost nothing more important. If we want to live in a society that that shouts loudly about human rights, um, we've got to protect right from the start. And and to me, that's um, you know, it's it's worth marching for. So I just want to encourage everyone to please, please join us and just open your ears. You may even 
have a different viewpoint to me on things. You may come in at the debate at a certain, you know, maybe you think um, first trimester is okay or see, whatever, but please just, just educate yourself and get to the point where you can think really hard about this and what are the other options. Um, but, yeah, so it's on 1pm 1, 1 and Bernie Finn's a champion. Um, he's a champion for this, this movement. He was there when the legislation passed. No wonder he coined the term Dictator Dan. No wonder he posts those <laughs> hilarious memes. Um, but, you know, he really, um, he was there. I mean, the, the hypocrisy, as you pointed out, Tim, the hypocrisy of this is just disgusting and despicable. Um, and Bernie Finn, when the legislation passed, um, you know, I, I, I know that he had a very special experience and, and uh, he was, he felt, um, what do I do now? Well, you march for the babies. So... Um, please come march march with us online and um, and show your support and share the video as well when it's made because it'll be professionally done. Yeah. I've also never heard of a, a woman who's decided to keep uh, her baby after an un unplanned pregnancy and regretted it. I know a few women who've had unplanned pregnancies. Uh, their, their, their children are now, well, uh, they reach reach the age of ten, and they're they're beautiful children. They're the mothers love their love their child. They're 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 certainly not uh, being neglected or anything like that. They're they're they're, they're bubbly children, and you just see uh, even even if it's unplanned, uh, children are still a blessing. Absolutely, you'll never ever ever regret keeping your child, um, but there's a very very strong chance that you'll regret. Um, discarding your child and thinking that there's no other option. And I understand, I actually do understand why women get into these, you know, um, or why they think that uh, this is, is their only option because the whole system's set up that way. The whole society and culture tells them um, that, you know, we live in this culture now where you can have, um, yeah, hedonism and, and there's no consequences for things and, and, and suddenly there are consequences and, and uh, everything's discarded and thrown away. And, and the messaging has been very powerful, very strong. Once again, like that frog in boiling water where babies have been dehumanised and uh, women and, and fathers are often told this is the only option. But it's not the only option. And um, I want to be in a culture and a society that, uh, yeah, protects the most vulnerable. And, um, yeah, that's, you know, the greatest richness and joy um, in my life is it has been as a mother you know um and you hear you know they, they certainly cause you stress and all, all the rest of it but um you're only as happy as your unhappiest child you know um it just uh, and and i i don't, can't speak on behalf of, of fathers but i i certainly um place and that's part of my i guess my ongoing activism as well i place such a, a strong emphasis on the role of fathers and Ultimately, I've kind of come full circle in this whole um, political battle because at the heart of it, it's about um, the strength of families. And I actually believe that family is the fundamental unit of society. And if we can heal a family, then, uh, you know, um, we work out from there, we can heal society. And um, so, yeah, we need to value mothers, we need to value fathers, and we most definitely need to value babies. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.